Hello everybody and welcome back to Imperator, where we are in a slightly awkward situation here. We need to allow our aggressive expansion to continue to decline. We do have some potential risk of rebellion over here that we'll have to deal with. That is, of course, something that we will deal with. Now, I do want to deal with this too many relations situation. We are already improving relations over here in Heraclea Minoa. But I would like to also improve opinion here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Excellent. And with that underway, we will go ahead and tick forward here. We need to allow our tyranny to tick down, our aggressive expansion to tick down, and we need to deal with our disloyal provinces. The characters we actually kind of don't care about, but the provinces, yeah, that's a bit of an issue. We're probably going to have a rebellion here in a few months, so we need to be prepared for that. In the meantime, we've already constructed a mine there, so I guess we'll construct a mine over here. Fantastic. Okay, so we know that we're going to have a rebellion, what, in about... Oh, where does that say? Five months. Okay. Now, we may want to begin moving our levies now. Although this says that they might rebel in five months. They're losing loyalty and may be plotting a rebellion. The governor of Mauritania is fairly loyal. He's not tremendously loyal, but it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not concerned about that. Unused trade routes and capital? Yeah, I also don't care about that. These barbarians, they came back. I don't like that. So we're going to go ahead and raise up, let's see here, our... Numidia is too disloyal, that's fine. I believe Baetica is where we want this to be. I cannot remember what region these are. No, I don't want to be unpaused right now. Hang on. Yeah, we'll take their pops. But also, I want to go into here and go into the regional map mode because I don't actually know our region names. Okay, so this is Contestania and this is Baet Baetica. So that's fine. So it would have to be either of these. And honestly, these are better troops in Contestania. We'll raise those up. And those are closer anyway. So then we will head on over and see about dealing with this. In before the rebellion happens while these are up and we can't put them down. Won't that be interesting? Well, they're not going to get this sieged anytime soon. That's for sure. So that's good for us. We're currently maxed on manpower, and I'm okay with that. We're mostly just waiting on AE at this point. We're at 34 political influence. We need to be at 50, of course. Wait, did we already do that? Hang on a moment. No, I don't believe we did. I'm kind of uh, forgetting right now. I'm pretty sure... Yeah. No economics, or no holy site for this person right here. This one, the holy site was destroyed for. That's what I was remembering. Okay, so we're going to beat these guys up. We are very likely going to win, even though they have a numerical advantage. We have better troops. Okay, Heno Hanid now has cancer. I mean, I am not too upset about that, in all honesty. Okay, so we beat up these guys. Now, we can't exactly follow them. But what we can do, of course, is we can put our levies right back down. There we go. Excellent. And then we can re-raise levies over here if we have to. They're just immediately turning around and coming back in. Okay. Well, we're going to have to raise different levies, then. I thought they'd retreat a little further than that. We can't raise this one yet, of course, so we'll have to raise the guys from Baetica. That's okay. They are all the way over here, though. Where's our nearest fleet? Our fleets are really far away. Okay. This is going to be interesting. And we apparently can't move them. Oh, that guy's disloyal. Right, we can move this one, though. Okay. They'll get there eventually, I suppose. 
And there's the War of Independence. Okay. So these guys are rebellious. And I'm going to combine these trips. We're going to take the first navy, or actually the second navy. We're going to take them up to here instead. And we can call Tartessia, and we probably should. Uh, let's see here. Alliance actions, call to arms. Okay. There we go. So it's only this single province here that rebelled, and we knew that was going to be the case. So let's go ahead and raise up our African levies, and we're going to have them meet our ships up here. Excellent. Maharbal now has dysentery. Good for him. Okay. So I believe our ships will slightly beat us here. But not by a tremendous amount. These guys are already on their way over. Do we have passage through here? No, we don't. Okay, that's fine. We will definitely embark this army. Right now. And we're going to come on over to here, of course. Okay. These guys are not making any progress over here. That's good to see. I would love to have access up over here, but we'll just have to move them via ship. Yeah, 500 troops? Okay. I'm, I'm not afraid of this in the slightest. This is really not going to be a problem. So let's just make our way over. And we will have these guys, as soon as they arrive here, disembark straight into this force. Should not be a problem. Technically, we're getting ticking war score, I believe. Wait, they have access here? Now that's awkward. Okay, well, we'll just disembark. There we go. Get them under siege, and then we'll get these guys moving over here as originally planned. We do need to get some siege engineers at some point. That is probably going to be necessary. I believe that is a martial advance? Let's see, sapping. Yeah, that gets us some siege engineers, and there's just generally more over here, presumably. Okay, so they're attacking us over here. I don't actually care. We'll just allow this siege to continue for now. They now have enough to siege up here. That's fine. And we will head on over here, pick up these lads, and we will head up over to this port. Fantastic. We're at negative 35% over here. It looks like they stopped attacking, actually. They came back. Interesting that they have access, but we don't. They can just kind of wander around out here, but I also don't exactly care. Now, Ticking War Score is going against us. I'm wondering why we had 20 war oh because it's blockaded okay never mind i figured it out <laughs> that would explain it the ticking war score will be on our side very shortly though and these guys will go ahead and come on up over this way of course and we will deal with these barbarians they are regenerating which is obnoxious of them to be sure we just just got a breach over here though so that's great as far as Contestania being uh, upset at us, it's getting better. But I wouldn't exactly call it good. Okay, these barbarians have been pushed back again. We're just going to walk away a little bit this time. See if we can get them to immediately turn around again. That would be nice if they would. We'll see if that's something that they do. Actually, they are immediately walking back into us. I'm okay with this. Okay, the barbarians are defeated. Fantastic. We can't put this army down because we're at war. That's a really weird thing, honestly. Like, I feel like we should be able to put levies down as long as they're in our territory. Kind of like in Crusader Kings. It's a weird restriction. Particularly if you raised them in a time of peace and then war was declared. Like, that should make a difference, I think. At any rate, we are about to get this captured, and the war will wrap up very shortly. 
I am going to go ahead and bring these guys down here, and we're going to see about coming down this way to deal with this. Unless the war ends when we cap this city. I'm not sure if that will happen or not. We'll find out. We're 99% war score, and it's kicking. So, yeah, it's it, it, this is over. There's no point in coming down here and wasting manpower. So we'll chill on that one. Just waiting on that ticking war score. Wait, are we capped? Yes, we are capped. We do need to come deal with this. As long as they control at least one territory, the tooltip indicated, that war score cannot go above 100. So we do actually have to deal with this. Hmm, Kapara? Are these the guys that are... Uh... No, that's Kartan. I was wondering if these are the guys that are re rebelling, but no. They're upset about the harsh ways of their governor, the governor of Magna Grecia. Okay. We could gain five corruption, and he'd gain ten loyalty. We could gain five popularity, and he's, he'd lose loyalty. I'm not too upset about that. Or we could gain ten popularity, and he would no longer be the governor. We would gain tyranny. We're at minimum tyranny right now. I like it. We're going to do that. So that, of course, means we need a new governor over in Magna Grecia. And we are going to put in this guy. Fantastic. Okay. Barbarians over here. Rude. Very, very rude. We'll have to deal with them in a moment. Yeah, these guys are walking away. They're not okay with this. And I don't blame them. We'll have this back momentarily, and there's nothing they can do about it. In fact, it's auto-capping from this fort over here. Wonderful. So we'll take this back, and actually we're at 100% war score now. Fantastic. These guys are becoming more bellicose. Good for them. And we're going to sue for peace, and we're going to demand everything here. Fantastic. This is no AE, which is great to see. Wonderful. And we're going to ditch half a point of AE. That is great. At this point, we are going to go ahead and put down the African levy. I am not going to put down this levy, however. We're going to bring them on over, and we're going to come deal with this barbarian force. Okay, so let's go ahead and build to Navy. Hang on. No, no, no. We want to embark army. There we go. <laughs> and we're going to make our way on over here. And yes, they're going to cap this. And yes, it will be obnoxious. But we'll deal with it soon enough. Okay, our religious advances have advanced. So, of course, we want to grab professional training right now to be able to raise a legion in the capital. Now, we don't yet have the law for that, and we should dedicate a holy site to... Both of them are good. But we're going to dedicate it to Balkarnim for now. Excellent. And with that there... That does mean that if we go in here, we can see, yep, that is in our control, our control, and our control. So we now need a holy site for Melkart, but that's it. Wonderful. Now our stability is still dropping, mostly due to our aggressive expansion. And I'm starting to believe that... These guys are gone. Okay, I'm starting to believe that because of aggressive expansion and the effects on stability... Ooh, a training camp. Yes. Because of the effects on stability that aggressive expansion have, which are pretty high, at least right now, when we don't have any other modifiers for this, we're going to have to make sure our aggressive expansion hits zero every time we want to declare a war. So essentially, we're going to have to make sure that our aggressive expansion is at zero before we declare wars. We'll have this guy go and destroy pirates again. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. The Parthian Horde has declared war on the Seleucid Empire. Good for them. That's a long ways away from us. We don't exactly care about that right now. 
fantastic. We are, of course, working on our opinion over here, and this province is still a little bit disloyal. I'm interested in checking... Yeah, I mean, this is... This is unlikely to change for a while, right? We are currently converting them over, but that's going to be a long-term project. Once again, we maybe could move in some... Hmm, these are not useful pops to move in. Never mind. We could move in some pops that were the correct type for us, but that's not really an option. There are only two pops here, though. Like, it's literally just two slaves. Interesting. That is literally the only thing here. So, once this converts over, which is going to be nine years away, that does mean that half of this will be much better off. Now, this guy and this guy have different opinions of us. Mostly modified by that base. This guy has a base of negative 30, and this one a base of zero. And I'm wondering what's different about them. They're both... Oh, this one's a freeman, and this one's a slave. Okay. Yeah, we just had a... Uh, we just had a freeman pop grow. That's what happened there. That's fine. That actually helps us, I think. No, that hurts us. Okay. <laughs> Now, we could build a structure here for some slave happiness. I'm not sure how much that would actually help, though. Maharbal Garbalid has been elected, and that's good for him. We do need a new a new Shafat, and we will go ahead and put this guy in. Fantastic. 53 months on that rebellion. Okay, that's fine. Eel would gain a bunch of opinion of Carthage. Eel is these guys here. They are our feudatory. We'll take the popularity. We'll want to annex them a little bit later on, but right now we're working on these guys over here who are actually client states and are counting or were counting against our uh, political influence gain because we had... Oh, Tartessia no longer exists. Okay, so we're actually fine on that front. Interesting. We are currently positive on the stability. And as our aggressive expansion ticks down, we will get better and better on that front. But I do want to put in a few more mines. Looks like we can put in mines up here. Wonderful. So yeah, I, I think that the aggressive expansion feeding into the stability as much as it does, that's a pretty big change from last time I played, and we're going to have to play around the aggressive expansion much bigger, or much more, uh, much more aggressively, I guess I would say. At least until we have additional modifiers here. Like, we've got that ruler zeal, right? But other than that, it's pretty much just the aggressive expansion and the decay. So, we definitely need to do something about that. We can call down an omen. We don't really need to lose tyranny. I'm feeling that the commerce income is good for us right now. Now, the pop assimilation speed on this is very useful. We should probably build a holy site. That is something we should do. But right now, of course, we don't have the political influence to do that. And that's okay. We will work on converting all that over eventually and slowly over time. Now, we should definitely work on... Let's see. We Punic Intervention will probably complete a new Carthage. We should definitely work on Punic Intervention, but that's going to be a lot of aggressive expansion. And I'd like to make sure that we're at least close to zero. Maybe at like one or two aggressive expansion before we actually declare this. This is two separate locations, though. Could we declare on just these guys? They are in a defensive league. That's what the guy's up here, right? Oh, uh, the governor of Mauritania? Is it 43 loyalty? That would be a lot of loyalty loss 
in that province. Okay, we're gonna do that, but we should be gaining loyalty in this province, I believe. Actually, we're currently negative, but let's go ahead and put in a governor here. And let's see here. He's miserly and unnoticeable. Miserly and submissive. I'm looking for something that will... Hmm, effective governor. That's a lot of happiness. And he's assertive. We'll put this guy in. And yeah, now we're gaining loyalty here. So we don't need to worry too much about this. I am kind of wondering what our pop spread is here. 52% integrated. Okay. I think we're I think we're okay over here. We can leave this on. Well, this is on harsh treatment. We can leave this on, say, something along the lines of acquisition of wealth. That wouldn't necessarily be terrible. Okay, so we'll do that. We do have a scorned family right now. The Gizgoid family. Okay, I, I kind of don't care. We'll give them a job next time we can, but right now, pass on that. Excellent. I do want to declare this, but I don't think this episode is the time for that. Just because I want to let our AE drop. More tyranny is actually good for dropping AE, which is interesting. Very, very interesting, but not, I think, tremendously useful right now. Of course, we should also be thinking about when we want to change our law for the Provisioning Act. We need 35 political influence, and I feel like this is kind of the top priority right now. Yeah, that is very, very good for us. We'll be able to raise a legion, and the question is, do legions work like in Crusader Kings with the Men-at-Arms, where they're... Or, actually, it wasn't the Men-at-Arms. It was Crusader Kings 2 with the retinue troops that they were just always up. I suspect so. That's how it used to work in this game. Kind of like in Europa that way as well, I suppose. So we'll find out as soon as we have 35 political influence here in another couple of months. That should not be too, too bad of a wait there. We're also doing pretty well on our Senate support. The oligarchs and the Democrats, not very happy with us, but the traditionalists, they're big fans. Excellent. I'm definitely slightly concerned about Rome. But we're not exactly in a position right now to be dealing with Rome. We need to finish up the Iberian struggle for right now. Our neighbor's wonder is the object of envy and awe of our populace. The people speak of the superiority of Rome. Dangerous talk. We would do well to heed the mood of the people and refocus our efforts on creating our own monumental work. Or, if all else fails, we could always take Roma from our neighbor instead. Yeah, we could. Five stability loss. Or we could gain a claim on Roma and five tyranny. That's the funny choice and the one that we're going to go with. We're not going to fight Rome right now, I don't think. But this is definitely the funny choice. The reason we're taking this is because the five tyranny is actually good for us in dropping our aggressive expansion. We're not taking it for the claim on Rome. Although that might come in useful a little bit later on. That might indeed... So, on this month tick, we should see, yeah, 0 0.02 from our tyranny. Very nice. That is always good to see. We are just waiting, of course, for our political... Oh, wait. Our political influence is exactly where it needs to be. We're not waiting for anything. We're putting through the Provisioning Act. Excellent. Our soldiers have long been used to providing their own armor and weaponry. However, this amendment would see them provide or otherwise pay for supplies and training. Hold up, redistrib redistribution of wealth. Uh, minus 10 loyalty for each head of family. Okay, that's fine. Ensuring the availability of equipment means we can create a core professional army to supplement the citizen levies we've relied on in the past. And that is very, very, very good for us. Let's look into that. So we can go into our legion here. 
we can raise at this point a single legion. And we're going to raise our legion in Africa. And this, we need to edit our composition. Ah, I see. I'm sure that we can do this later. But for now, what we probably want is just a single cohort of heavy infantry. And then I think we can boost that up later on. We'll see. This may be a mistake. The First Legion. It's a large step for a nation to show it has the resources to keep a standing army. As we have formed Saba of Africa, we now stand as a nation above others. Our glorious nation enters a new era of professional soldiers that will show no mercy to our enemies. Additionally, they will be able to forge a legacy of their own, and bravery, or lack thereof, shall determine its character. Fantastic. Okay, so if we go in here, we can... Can we recruit additional units here? We can drill the army, and that is definitely something that we probably want to do. We can get them drilling. They can build military roads, it looks like. That's great. We are definitely going to want to start building some roads. And then we can create a new unit. Okay, that's just splitting them off. Attachments are not allowed, blah, blah. Yeah. So the question is, how do we recruit additional units to this? Of course, this guy is going to be pretty powerful. And we're going to need to consider that. This is the first army of the Saba of Africa. I'm wondering if we do this in the Legion view here. Yes, this is where we do this. So the potential strength is 13 right now. So what I'm thinking is we add in one, two, three, four cohorts of heavy infantry. We add in one, two, three, four, five cohorts of archers for our back line. And then we're going to add in two cohorts of heavy cavalry and one cohort of engineers. Something along the lines of this. We'll see how this goes. We'll confirm this change. This will be pretty expensive. But that means that we now have 6,500 troops here in our professional army. And that is pretty great. Of course, we can't raise up any additional legions right now because we can only raise a legion in our capital until we get our law changed to military modernization. And for that, we would need the invention cohorts and we would need to be a great power. So, and we need the military reform event chain. That'll be a while, but just having these professional troops here is a huge, huge boon for us. We're probably going to want to start building some roads at some point soon. Can we detach off just like these engineers? We might be able to. But that is something that we will look into next episode. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.